Welcome and welcome back everybody, it's Tabletop Toki here, and in today's video we'll be doing a solo playthrough of Fantasy Form from Button Shy Games. During the course of the playthrough, I'll give a tutorial about how the game is played, and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I share my thoughts about the game in general. A huge shout out to Button Shy Games for sending me a copy for review and preview. Being that it is a preview copy, please be aware that things are subject to change for the actual retail release. And if you find this video helpful or entertaining, please feel free to give it a like. It really helps out the channel and it's free. But without further ado, let's get started. So here is a game of fantasy form set up and ready to play. Over the course of the game, you'll be playing as an alchemist who is trying to obtain enough wealth in order to gain an elemental form and defeat your rival. For setup, you're going to start by pulling out the starting cards. You'll have your rival card your starting alchemist card, your starting item, the torch, which you'll use to mark your health starting at five. You'll also take your wealth tracker and your starting companion, the guide, and mark the amount of shards you're going to start the game with based on the difficulty you select. For this game, we'll be playing at standard difficulty, so we'll start with eight shards. All these starting cards are also marked with a star for convenience. Then we're going to go ahead and reset the market. We'll shuffle all of the cards together and start by dealing out three cards to our upgrade row. Then we'll put three cards in the encounters row. We'll place the rest of the cards with their essence side up in the ethereal row. There are going to be a few phases in each round. The first thing that will happen is an Outlands encounter, where you'll resolve the top box in the leftmost encounter card. Then we'll have a Forge encounter, where you resolve the middle text on the middle encounter card. The last encounter card will set the market prices for the different essences that are in the ethereal row and that you accumulate in your pack. We'll then move on to the market phase where you can spend shards to purchase upgrades, swapping them out with the items or companions that you gain, elemental forms, which will then replace your alchemist card, and purchasing and selling essences, which will go into your pack equal to the hold limit of your particular form. Any sold essences will not be discarded. They will actually go to the end of the ethereal row. The cost for the essences is going to be notated by the market prices on the rightmost encounter card and the cost for your upgrades are going to be in the top left marked in orange. Once you've completed all the transactions you want to in the market phase, you're going to move on to either an exploration or a rival phase. For exploration, you're going to discard the rightmost card in the upgrade row, slotting in your encounter card by flipping it over. The same thing will happen with the encounters and the ethereal row. If you ever have one or zero cards left in the ethereal row after after a market phase, you'll instead move to a rival phase. During the first rival phase, your adversary will gain an elemental form. The next time a rival phase triggers, your rival's form will trigger its ability, and then you'll have a chance to attack for four shards per health. If you ever deplete the rival's health down to zero points, you win the game. However, if your health ever reaches zero at any point, you will have lost. In addition to that, once your rival gains a form, you only have a total of four rounds to defeat them. If the round mecha ever drops below one, then you have lost the game. And that's all we need to know to get started. So we're going to go ahead and proceed with our Outlands encounter. The card reads, Crystal Vipers shed their highly valued and delicate skin. Gain one shard for each empty space in your pack unless you have a water symbol. Looking at our torch card, our alchemist, and our guide, we don't have a water symbol. So we will be gaining two shards since we have a total of two empty spaces in our pack, bringing us to 10 shards total. Then we have a forge encounter, which reads, a guild member has more essences than she can transport. You may purchase an available shadow or life essence for up to half the price. Okay, so looking at our market prices, shadow essences are three and life essences are four. After this encounter, life essence will go up to five and then seven where shadow essences will go up from three to three to five. So I think we want to go ahead and purchase life essence for half the price rounded up. So since it's at four, we're going to purchase it for two and we'll slot that down into our pack right over here. And we're going to go ahead and move on to our market phase. Looking at our options, we have a mercenary who has four different symbols, none of which are overlapping with the torch, so that might be good. The guy does let us cycle out the rightmost card in this row, which isn't great, but we can look at our torch. So it says once per turn, you may look at the back of the rightmost card in the ethereal row. So this will show us an encounter that's coming up, which is going to let us hire an available companion for two fewer shards than their cost. This mercenary will be gone by then, but maybe we'll get another one at a discount. We'll also take two damage unless we have a torch. So we want to keep that torch there instead of purchasing the healer's kit. And unfortunately we don't have enough to purchase this fire form. I'm thinking that we might want to just take the mercenary though, 
because we do have enough shards and we'll be able to sell this life essence for more as well. The other option is we could purchase this other life essence for four and we would make a profit of three if we hold on to it for two rounds. And since we don't think we'll be buying a companion, that might be our best bet. So we're going to decrease our shards to four and purchase a life essence for our pack. So now we're going to move on to exploration. This card will be discarded. These will slot down. This will flip over. These will slot down. This will flip over and these will move down as well. So we have considerably less time here, but remember that when we sell essences, they will go to the end of the ethereal row. So we have in the least expensive essence, if you have the hammer or dagger symbol, which we don't because we did not purchase that mercenary. And for our forge encounter, take two damage unless you have a fire symbol, which we do. So our plan was to hang on to these for one more round until the price goes up to seven and then sell them. We can buy shielding bracers to reduce damage. We don't have enough for the healer's kit. It. So I think we're going to wait on that. We might as well use the torch here to see what's going on. We have take one damage unless we have our boots, which we don't. We could use the guide to move the rightmost card in the ethereal row to the left, which could potentially set us up for having boots later. So we'll try that and see how it goes. And moving on to our next exploration phase, we're just going to cycle out our cards once more. Ooh, that looks like a very fancy hammer. And then we're going to resolve our first Outlands encounter. So pay two shards unless we have the nature leaf symbol. We do not, so we lose two shards, unfortunately. And then we take one damage from some stinging dust clouds stirring up while we're entering from the Outlands. We don't have a water symbol, so we are going to take our first point of damage, bringing us down to four health. Now, however, we can sell our two life essences. They heal us up to three damage, but since we've only taken one damage so far, we're just going to make a profit, and that brings us from two all the way up to 16 shards, since there's seven each. And we're just shy of being able to purchase an elemental form, unfortunately. The other option that we could do, all of these seem fairly expensive. Martial Essence costs two and we could get a profit of one later, but that doesn't seem great. I think what we'll do instead is purchase this Magentine Hammer. But before we do that, we're going to use the ability of the Torch. This one says gain two shards unless you have water. That is fine because the hammer does not have that symbol. So we should be okay. These will simply swap places like so. And we spend six money to gain that, bringing us down to 10 shards. And again, we don't have enough for our elemental. So we're going to move on to our next phase here. We'll flip these over. We have an air elemental form. Okay, we're going to gain two shards since we don't have the water symbol. Um, and then it says for our forge encounter, a rejuvenating wind blows across the outlands, carrying the sounds of distant battle. Gain one available martial essence or heal one point of damage. Martial essences will be worth three and we're good on health. So I think we'll go ahead and gain that essence. All right. And let's see, we have 12. We can't purchase another martial essence, unfortunately. We could purchase the shadow essence and get a uh, one point difference. But if we purchase one of the life essences for four, we'll gain three by selling it for seven. So let's go ahead and spend four to gain a life essence. We're cutting it close. Luckily, we have two essences left. Again, if there was only one, we would move to the rival phase. But for now, we're going to go ahead and swap these out. Okay, and we have our Outlands encounter. You accidentally spring a hunter's trap. Take one damage unless you have the boots icon, which we don't. We're down to three health, and we are going to lose an essence to a mindless shambler, <laughs> unless we have the ranged crossbow icon, which we luckily have. So we're going to sell both of these now since they are as expensive as they're going to be and it'll buy us more time with our ethereal row. So first let's sell the martial essence for three money. That brings us up to 11 and our life essence for seven. So we go from 11 all the way up to 18. We're just too shy of purchasing a form which is really unfortunate. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get there. 
Um, there aren't any essences. The blue essence is a little bit cheap right now, but we don't have any available. So I think we just need to move on to our next phase. And we are going to gain some shards here from the forge encounter, but we're not quite sure what will come up next. We have a bandit companion. All right, let's see if we'll have enough. So for the outlands, it says a monolith shimmers as you approach, then suddenly fades. Gain one shard plus one more for each essence in your pack. So we just get one. But that's fine because we also discover a bandit hideout that seems to be unguarded. So we gain one shard or two if we don't have an elemental form, which we don't, bringing us up to 21 shards. So we do have enough now to purchase one of these forms. They will also come in at full health. So those two points of damage we took will be fine. Our options are the water elemental, which will allow us um, to take less damage with four health and five slots and a water symbol or the air elemental with three slots, and it'll let us gain one shard for each point of damage we take from our rival. I'm not sure whether our rival will do damage to us, but getting shards seems good. We haven't had much use for having a large pack quite yet, and having more health seems all right as well. So we're gonna swap this out for our alchemist, spending the 20 shards required, bringing us all the way down to a very sad one shard here. And then we're going to move on to our next phase. If we purchase this, it won't go up in value and it'll end um, this round. So we're going to keep going for one more here. And we have an Outlands encounter, an ancient font of power emits raw magical energy. You may buy any number of essences for one shard less than the market value. This life essence is worth five, but we don't even have five shards or four shards to purchase it. So unfortunately that won't trigger and our forge encounter itinerant cleric offers to heal your wounds. You can spend up to three shards to heal one damage point per number of shards spent. So again, we're at full health. So that's not going to trigger anything necessarily. It looks like we're just going to be Moving on to our first rival phase, since we only have one card here. So the way that's going to work for the first rival phase is we're going to take all of our cards in all of the three different rows and discard them. Then we're going to shuffle them up and the first elemental that we find will become the form of our adversary. So we have a fire elemental here, which will damage us for two when it attacks in the future. So we're going to place this tracker on the five to mark its health with our countdown timer showing the four facing up. And then we're going to do a reset. So shuffling these up, we're going to deal three cards to our upgrade row, three cards to our encounters row, and the rest of the cards will be placed in our ethereal row as essences. So let's see, we have our first Outlands encounter. We take one point of damage unless we have the shoe boot icon which we don't and then we take two damage if we have a torch luckily we don't otherwise we'd be looking pretty low on health as far as purchasing goes we could build the buy this guild loan contract it doesn't have any symbols but we'll get some money for it i don't necessarily think that that is the best plan right now the only thing we can afford is a martial essence but those aren't going up in value anytime soon the other option is to take the guild contract and the only essence that's going up that we would be able to afford is the shadow essence but that would only get us one extra point and then we would lose all of the symbols on our hammer so we're just going to move on to the next phase and see what happens. We have an Outlands encounter. A tired messenger arrives at camp with an urgent message. Guild fees have come due. Pay two shards. Well, we only have one, so there's that. And then we gain a shard or two if we have no elemental form. So we'll gain one back. Okay, so we're very much in the same situation that we were in. We could purchase a martial essence and it'll go up by two later. We can wait to do that as well, just in case anything crazy happens. Oh, we can discard a martial or shadow essence to gain twice its price during the next phase, but that means that it'll still only be one. So our other option, oh, I was going to say we could buy the guild loan contract and get enough to purchase the shadow essence and sell it back for 10, but it's not an option anymore. So we're just going to keep moving on and see what happens. <laughs> okay, we're going to flip this over and get a new encounter. 
First bent birds dive from above, searching for food and energy. For each essence in your pack, either lose two shards or take one damage. So I guess it was good that we didn't purchase an essence. I was wondering if there would be a card where we would like lose it or be penalized in some way. So good call there. And then we have discarding an essence for twice its market price. We don't have any. Oh no, but now we can't purchase the martial essence because it's here. Mistakes were made. We just have to press on, unfortunately. I don't think that this round is going to be very productive based on how things are playing out so far. But we'll see. Maybe we'll get lucky with our encounters. Blood moles burrow up from the ground and are drawn to powerful energies. Take three damage if you have 12 or more shards. We absolutely do not. And then we heal one point of damage unless we have fire icons. So we go back up to five. Again, we can't afford anything. So we're just continuing on here. We really splurged on this form here. We'll see if it pays off. Okay, so uh, we have to lose an essence of our choice unless we have this mace symbol, which we do. We gain one shard. For each point of damage, we are below full health. We're at full health. Oh no. <laughs> so this is going away. We're just dwindling down here. And this will be our last one. Gain one shard plus one more for each essence in your pack. Yes. We doubled our money. We're in a whole two shards. And we may take two damage to gain four shards. Yes, let's do it. All right, so we're at three. Wait, they're gonna do two damage to us though. We gotta gamble. It needs to happen. Do we want to purchase the Radiant Essence? We can't because it costs six. Is there anything else we can purchase for six? We can do Shielding Bracers to reduce damage incoming by spending shards, but that just doesn't seem great. So I think we're just going to go into our rival phase. They're going to deal two points of damage to us. So we're down to a whopping one health, and then we can spend four shards to do damage to them, which I think we will do. And we gain one shard for each point of damage we take from our rival. So we gain two shards, and we want to do a full two hits. I think just one or four, or do we want to save our money? It's hard to say. Let's do one point of damage for four. And this is going to tick down to three and our rival is at four health. Okay, let's perform our reset now, gather up all the cards from all the different rows. We're going to redistribute them and see what we get. So our upgrade row, our encounter row, and our ethereal row. And look something like this. What do we have here? We can buy any number of essences for one shard less than the market price. Well, pink is at two, our shadow essences, and they will be at five, which is a net gain of four each. That seems really good. And they only cost one each right now. So we're going to buy all three, which brings us down to one point. And we'll take all of these into our pack since we have our pack limit of three now with this form. And then we lose an essence unless we have the crossbow, which we do have. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. We'll see if that pays off. Okay, we have, you may hire an available companion for two fewer enlisted. Unfortunately, we don't have enough. We take two damage if we have a torch. We do not, we cannot sell these. We want to hold on to them for one more round until they're worth five each. So we're gonna press on and hopefully we'll be all right. Oh, this is if you have more than one essence in your pack, lose one. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> then we would have two for five each, which would be 10. But if we sell two now for six, then we'll still have one. So it'll be better to sell these two right now for three each. That'll not give us a gain of one shard. So we're at one and then we go up to seven. And then we're going to move on to our next phase and see how we do. Okay. For each essence in your pack, either lose two shards or take one damage. Well, we can't take a damage, so I guess we're losing two shards. Ugh. But it did save us from having to pay for all three. And then we have more than one. We lose them all. We're going to sell this for five now, which brings us up to ten. So this round is looking a lot better, except for the fact that we only have one health. We will heal one, but we're going to take two at the end of this. And unfortunately, I did not stop in time to grab a potential life essence to heal us back up. This might not be great. I was very focused on getting more 
money and also not focused on using the guide's power to shift the life essences back if we had any i don't even remember because i wasn't thinking about it but that's on me if it doesn't pan out well we'll just have to see what happens at this point we don't want to purchase anything so we're just going to move on to our next encounter here oh gosh uh pay two shards unless we have a leaf we do not so we're actually gonna lose two going down to eight and then we heal one point of damage unless we have a fire symbol which we don't hmm we could purchase some shadow essence if we purchase more than one we're going to trigger the fire elemental the sword heals us once we damage our rival but the rival's going to damage us first so that doesn't help us either i think we'll purchase one of these bringing us down to six which one do we think has a good benefit? So there's no way for us to know because we don't have the torch. So let's just purchase the rightmost one for two and then we'll sell it for three next round and gain one of those shards back, hopefully. All right. And we have, you may buy an artifact with a mace symbol for three shards, gain one shard if there are none available. Um, there is one available and it's the healing one. But again, that doesn't help us unless we can get some life back before that in one available martial essence or heal one point of damage oh thanks sweet jesus so knowing that we are not going to die do we want the sword of siphoning so that we can gain points back and we would spend three on it which brings us down to three which means that we won't have enough to damage the elemental so it's a moot point anyway we'll just keep the three symbols instead of swapping it out for the sword i believe we can sell the shadow essence for three. Oh, we can sell the shadow essence for three. So yes, let's go ahead and purchase the sword of siphoning. They're just going to do a straight swap for three. And then we're going to sell the shadow essence for three, which brings us back up to six. And then we'll cycle out for one last encounter phase and hope that we don't take any damage. Lose one essence of your choice unless you have the mace symbol. Doesn't matter. We don't have it anyway. And if you have an elemental form, either pay four shards or take two damage. Well, if we take two damage, we're going to die. So we're moving down to two shards. Oh, man. That's terrible. We're going to take two damage from our elemental here, bringing us down to one. We don't have enough shards to damage them. So we'll move this down to two. We're going to do a reset of our market here. I might have been a little overzealous in that first round getting a form so early on. Maybe putting it off for one round would have allowed us to buy more potions and build up more money. But at the same time, we can only have a total of, I think it's 25 in our pack at any given time. So I'm not really sure if that was the best move. But it's the it's the move we made. <laughs> okay. Oh. And then we have our essences in our ethereal row up here on top. There's that life essence we needed so desperately. Although it's very expensive, we don't have enough to purchase it. So that's fun. Outlands encounter. A tired messenger. Yep, we just pay two shards. So we are broke. Gain one available martial essence or heal one point of damage. Let's go ahead and heal because we're at one right now and that's very precarious. We don't have any money. There's no way for us to get money, purchase anything. So again, we're kind of put back into this loop here. Hold please, <laughs> instead of gaining one. There's some things happening in my brain. Instead of gaining one, the next one says that we can discard a martial essence or twice its market price, which will be six. So let's go ahead and take that instead and get us some money. And hopefully we won't get penalized for being too greedy. Although, sound like famous last words. Okay, gain the least expensive essence if you have the hammer or the dagger. We have neither because we got rid of our freaking magnetine hammer. That's unfortunate. Okay, but we can discard this for six money so that we're not completely broke anymore. This goes to the end. And then what do we want? We can buy this mercenary who's jacked on all these different symbols with only one overlapping symbol with our sword. We have a healer's kit that heals us by one extra point. We're gonna take a point of damage because we don't have the water symbol. So what we need to do instead is we need to purchase life essence, but we don't have enough because it costs seven. 
Oh no. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's anything that we can do. We just have to hope that we gain life from this card somehow. We could move this one over, but again, we don't know what that card is since we don't have a torch. So out of our hands at this point. Okay. And we have gain one shard plus one more for each essence in your pack. Well, there's that shard we needed. And then we take one damage unless we have a water. So that brings us down to zero health. We were only able to do one point of damage to our rival. So unfortunately, we were not victorious today. So there you have it. That is a solo playthrough of Fantasy Form from Button Shy Games. This is a spiritual successor to Spaceship, if you're familiar with that solo title. It works very similarly where you have the different encounter cards and market values of different items and you're trying to purchase some big value items. Overall, I think that Fantasy Forum takes that amazing multi-use card resource management system and just ups the ante, the flavor with trying to get your different elemental forms as your big item purchase really fits within the game and the mechanics. Fantasy Forum provides an adequate challenge. There are different levels that you can start at. If you feel that the regular game is too easy once you get acclimated with all of the cards. And I love the variability of the different encounters that come up from game to game, the different order that the potions come up in, and the variable market that goes along with that, how you can plan ahead. I also love the amount of customization that you have with your character. Not only do you have a form that you are going to take on, but you also have your companion and an item at any given time. So there are a lot of decisions you can make with regard to that and crafting a playstyle for each different playthrough. Overall, this is a solid solo game. You can probably tell from the playthrough and if you're familiar with spaceships whether this is for you or not, but I highly recommend it if you're looking for a crunchy solo experience packed into 18 cards. So be sure to check out Fantasy Forum if that sounds good to you. And that's all the time we have for today. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you would enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a like so that it can get out to a wider audience. It really, really helps the channel and it's free. And if you want to stick around for more solo and other board game content, you can subscribe down below as well. Thanks as always for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.